Welcome back to Money Matters. I am Emily Johnson and I am joined by David Kroll and we have been discussing all things where your money matters. Following just a summary of markets uh, for the last week or so, we wanted to dig a little bit into something that's sort of a, our toolbox, if you will, of uh, credit management because in this good market, if it's possible to take advantage of low interest rates uh, in, a, in a positive way, um, the one good way to do it or one way to hope you know, that you can at least take advantage of it is to have great credit scores. So David, of course, is the master of looking at all of these things. So why don't you kick off and... Uh, it's, it's becoming, uh, uh, the whole issue of credit has become uh, more and more of a uh, text, uh, uh, a context and, and an atmosphere in every aspect of our lives because we're li living in a digital society. One of the only unifying pieces of data that affects all 300 million Americans is the the credit database. Uh, now, more and more uh, other forms of data are being collected on a daily basis. The Amazons of the world, the Googles of the world, the Facebooks of the world, they are uh, developing also massive databases that are in parallel or in tandem to the credit database. But the credit database is massive and it's the oldest database if you, if you don't count the IRS. But the IRS isn't supposed to give away its information. Hmm. So why right. are there three credit rating agencies? Well, there's, there's, and that's not a plant, it's really... No, it's not <laughs> a plant. There's, 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 there's three companies, private companies, that collect the core credit data. Uh, one is Experian, one is Equifax, and the third is TransUnion. Uh, you'll see them pop up uh, when you get, uh, when you get a, 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 your Capital One bill, credit card bill, or your Amex, or your whatever uh, bill in the mail. They'll say, free credit report, and it'll be either TransUnion or Equifax or uh, Experian. Uh, these, these are what they, what they are is massive databases that are thrown into and through a uh, piece of software known as an algorithm. And the algorithm <coughs> analyzes in literally tens of thousands of different ways all of this data. And it makes a forecast based on that data of uh, your ability to pay your bills. So uh, uh, there's really lots and lots and lots of additional things that I'm... But I know when you look at it, whatever, whatever metrics it is that you look at from a mortgage lending standpoint is slightly different than what, for example, you know, I, you said the Capital One. I know when I get my Capital One, look at my credit score, it says X. But I know when I go in to get underwritten for a mortgage, it'll be something less than X. Something so less what, than X. why is that? Different algorithms. There's, when you're borrowing uh, uh, um, money for a mortgage, the algorithm that all of this data is put through, yours specifically, but it's always yours in the context of the other 300 million people. So it's not just your credit data. Okay. It's not just uh, you and how well you personally paid your bills and what bills you have and what the amount. It's a relative of measure. It's oh. a relative measure. So if the rest of the world is improving in their credit payments and you're sort of setting still, then yours will go down. That's interesting. I didn't realize that. That's right. Okay. And uh, and the mortgage test is a different test than uh, the consumer algorithm for automobiles and credit cards. Is and it a bell-shaped curve? Uh, the it's really a separate curve. Uh, you're, the likelihood of certain people with certain credit histories to pay their mortgage on time is completely different than the likelihood of that same person to pay their credit card on time or to pay their automobile mm -hmm. on time. Does it matter if it's paying the credit card off or paying just making the minimum payment in order to keep that? That payment history and payment behavior is completely different in different people on different types of bills. There are certain people who absolutely do not pay a single bill on time except for the car payment. Mm -hmm. So you'll look at the credit report and you say, my goodness, never has seen a bill that he wanted to pay. <laughs> and then you, you're looking down through, you know, collection, collection, charge off, late, late, late. But the Lexus is covered. But the, <laughs> the, the automobile is covered, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, 
other folks, uh, every bill perfect except the student loans. Hmm. You know, so the, there are many behaviors and the credit algorithms are meant to capture the behavior patterns, hmm. not just the specific history. So, uh, for example, if I, I'm uh, older and I have a lot of credit history, if I was late tomorrow on my 30 days late on my uh, uh, Capital One credit card, mm -hmm. uh, it probably wouldn't affect my credit very much at all because I have a massive credit history and there have been no lates and there's been no indication that my being late on the Capital One card was part of a pattern. Right. However, even with my age, my history, my good behavior, if that good late, looks. my all that good stuff, looks, yeah. my <laughs> high intelligence, I mean, we could go. But even if all of that was true and, and I had that one late on the Capital One account and it was a Capital One account that was at $4,800 out of a $5,000 limit, and I had that one late, mm -hmm. it would probably cost me 100 points on my credit score. Wow. What Be is because what that says to the algorithm is, gee, we don't know what his condition is, but it's we're thinking that he may have been late because he's pushed his credit to the limit and has no place else to go, mm -hmm. which is not true. It, Maybe that I was just on vacation. Right. What and what is the impact of moving? If you have four credit cards and one of them gives you the option of moving a balance over for, you know, for zero percent interest for eighteen months, like you get in the mail all the time. What is the impact of that? Great idea. Great really? idea. Saves you a bucket of money. Um, but what you have to be careful of is each of the credit cards that you have has a limit on it, a credit limit. When you shift money around credit card to credit card to beat the system in order to get lower interest rates mm -hmm. or zero interest rates, what you got to be careful about is to not use the credit card up to the limit. So just because you've got a new card with zero percent interest on it with a $10,000 limit, you can't transfer $10,000 worth of balances into that guy because you've just maxed it out, which is a credit negative. Mm -hmm. You really want your different credit cards to have approximately 40% usage, 40% hmm. usage. Less than that is, it, is so irrelevant? Month, yeah, well, less than, less than that doesn't impact your credit. Remember also that credit cards are all revolving, that the money's supposed to come in and out. Mm -hmm. So if you need a credit float in your life of $4,000 just to keep life moving, what you need is two credit cards, both of which have $5,000 limits so that you can run the bill, the two different bills up to $2,000 back down, $2,000 back down. When the bill comes due, you throw $500 in. So qu question do, about, do, 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 I completely get, get the, the math. Yes, yeah. and I, I get yeah. a question sometimes about um, high school kids. Is it is it useful to get, if they can drive, is it useful to get them a credit card to so that they can start building credit history, assuming you have a reason? You know, Absolutely. Um, the, the correct answer is three credit three. cards. Three. Uh, uh, absolutely uh, an automobile loan and two credit cards, uh, two credit cards and a <coughs> dis department store card. Uh, In their name or can they be a second on credit. yours? If you have a card, you can just you get can, them a card on yours? It's slightly weaker, but absolutely it works. Interesting. I want three lines for a young person, three lines of active credit. Hmm. Uh, that are cycling through. With a lot of education around that. With so. a lot of education <laughs> around it, that's right, that's right. Awesome. So it's, it's really, it's actually the, the, the most boring, but it's also can be made into a fun conversation. Uh, there's lots more to say about it. Agreed. It's money matters. Exactly. Well, thank you for hanging with us today. Hopefully this has been educational, entertaining, all those things. Please shoot us your ideas and thoughts. And until next week, have a wonderful one, and we'll be back with more Money Matters. Thank you.